Central Southern Woman. And today, we are going to review the Doctrine of Man, Chapter 26, and 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. This is my Kindle version, and we will start out with um, just the review of the book, and then we always exit and talk personally a little bit. So, first thing, it says um, in the chapter, we use the word man in its classical and biblical sense as synonymous with humanity and mankind. As we see in Genesis 127, this term includes both male and female. Um, he talks about a couple of stories, and I usually don't read you the stories. Um, but I'll, I'll just, I'll usually just do the end part. And it says, perhaps the examples give us a glimpse of what God originally intended our whole mind to be capable of doing. So what the stories are about, um, well, this is pretty interesting. I guess we could read a little bit of it. It says, um, this one right here, one of the most arresting speculations arise from an observation of people suffering from the idiot savant syndrome. These people are individuals who for the most part are severely retarded, yet they sometimes possess astounding powers in very limited areas. Um, and it talks about the twin, there's a couple of twins in New York that can calculate the day of the week of any day you mention, date you mention, and if you ask in which months and years of the century, the 21st, will fall on a Thursday, the brothers can give you the correct answer instantly. And then he talks about another uh, savant can hear a long, intricate, classical piano piece for the first time and immediately sit down at a piano without the music and play it back flawlessly. And then he talks about another man in Endingburg He's legally blind and so severely retarded he can barely speak, yet he draws pictures with crayons that betray the skill of a master and are sold for exorbitant prices around the world. Um, we, I mean, this is just amazing, and it says the minds of savants are like calculators or tape recorders or cameras. They're able to capture specific details of pictures or songs or mathematical formulas and then use the details with exact precision. It's just outstanding and amazing. What he's talking about is our brain. He's talking about man and how our brain is um, very, a very small portion of it is even used. Um, and so it says the indications from scripture suggest that a man's capacity before the fall and his capacity once restored and glorified in heaven are unimaginable. And someone once wrote that if we were to see our glorified selves walking down the street towards us, we would be tempted to fall at our feet and worship ourselves. Such is the future of humanity and Christ. So what he's telling us is that our brains are capable of unbelievable things and unimaginable things, and that's how God created us to be. And just like Adam in the garden, um, he doesn't talk about this, but um, how he named, you know, uh, everything, all the uh, animals and the plants and all that, and he, uh, his, his mind was in full capacity. And um, so just keep in mind that ours are not. Um, so it's amazing what God had originally planned for us to do. It says the four major subdivisions of the doctrine of man are origin, nature, distinctiveness, and destiny. The first one, origin, says man was created by God in his image. I'm, I'm just looking to make sure y'all can see uh, the view well. It looks like you can. It says man's purpose is to know God and enjoy him forever. Man was created in a perfect fellowship and harmony with God and in his image. This does not mean physical likeness, for God does not have a physical body, 
but it means in the psychological, emotional, and spiritual likeness of God. And just that alone, thinking of that, that God would create us in his likeness is an enormous blessing and unbelievable thing that he would even make man. Um, and that if when he decided to make us, he would do it in his um, image. It says the central passage for this is, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. That's Genesis 1:27. The next section is nature. Man has a spiritual as well as a physical dimension. Man is a, uh, oh, he's just repeating this for you to fill in the blanks. The spirituals are blank here. Man is spiritual as well as physical. Man's earthly physical body is destined to die. The moment he is born, the process is set in motion for him to die. So his spirit, though, however, lives forever and transcends in his physical limitation. After man dies, he receives a new body that lives forever. That's exciting, especially the older you get and your body starts wearing out. I mean, it's exciting anyway that God would even let us live with him in a place called heaven. And it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The third subdivision is distinctiveness. Man has capacities that go beyond those of any animal and mark him as the pinnacle of God's creation. Man possesses intellect, emotion, and will. With intellect, he can now know, reason, and think. With emotion, he can feel, empathize, and experience. With will, with, with will he can choose. And these are all characteristics of God and, as such, are part of the image of God within man. In addition, man has the capacity for self-awareness and awareness of God and awareness of afterlife and the ability to envision life in the future under different scenarios such as heaven and hell, etc. Man certainly has characteristics that overlap with the animals, but his capacities not only go beyond those of animals, he has capacities that no animals have. The passage here is, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. What a blessing it is to know that we're on the top of the chain here on the earth uh, and that we don't have to worry about things and animals and things ruling over us. Um, it's just amazing, really, when you think about it. So your fourth subdivision is destiny. Man will live forever in heaven or hell. And this is, a, it, it, this is the one a lot of people have a hard time with. They don't, they, everybody wants to talk about God and love and heaven, but nobody wants to talk about hell, hell but it is real. And, um, and this is our last subdivision for man. And it says, though man's spirit inhabits a body at all times, that body changes after death on earth. A new body is received, depending on his destiny, in which he will continue to live forever. Destiny in hell is portrayed as agonizing torment, though little is known of the specifics of the torment. Existence in heaven is pictured in great detail, though we still might wish for more details. The heavenly body is beautiful beyond imagination, exceedingly powerful, and not subject to time and space limitations. The citizen of heaven will rule in the celestial realm and will possess power, wisdom, and unbound creativity. Greater attention will be given to man's destiny later in this chapter 
and in the chapter on the doctrine of future things. The central passage for this is, it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. We have reviewed the doctrine of man. We have reviewed um, destiny. Um, is that man was created in his man was created by God in his image. So um, we have in for nature, and this is the symbol. It says man has a spiritual as well as a physical dimension. I have to go back and look because I, I want to make sure that I do this right. The first one's origin with the hands symbol because we were created in God's image. The second one is nature with this image that man is, has a spiritual as well as a physical dimension. The third one is distinctiveness. Man has capacities that go beyond those of any animal and mark him as the pinnacle of God's creation and for destiny. And it shows the clouds in the, uh, I guess that's the sun. It says man will live forever in heaven or hell. So this is supposed to represent heaven, I'm sure. Um, so let's go to the end of the chapter. And he just has, in this book, if you have the written version, he has you just write down this stuff over and over for nature and uh, cre uh, creation or, I see, I, I mean, his destiny. I have a hard time remembering them. I have to go back. So if, unless I've got my written book in front of me, it's hard for me to, to know how to fill in the blanks. Even if I've just read it, that's just how I am. My mind is not the best. Of, so that's one reason I love this book so much, because he has you repeat, 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 fill in the blank, fill in the blank. And it really helps you apply what you've learned. Um, let's see if I can fill in these blanks. Man was created by God in his image. Man has a blank as well as a physical dimension. Um, spiritual. And it's nature, I guess. Man has blank that go beyond those of any animals and mark him as the pinnacle of God's creation. Man has um, I know it's our brain. But see, I can't even remember the word. Y'all probably think, good Lord, and this girl is distinctiveness. Distinctiveness. That's a long word. And then the last one, let's see if I can fill in the blank. Man will live forever in heaven or hell. That one's easy. Okay, so now here is our symbols for the doctrine. And uh, we have the Bible was first, Christ. No, it's God, then Christ, then the Holy Spirit then angels, and now we've reviewed man. And tomorrow we will do sin, the doctrine of sin for tomorrow, chapter 27. Now I'm going to... Hey, y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, it's amazing how all of my cameras show a different... Um, they all make me look different as far as my complexion and stuff goes. The, the, the cameras on your phone now are fixed that you can't really see like your freckles and stuff as well. And now this one is a webcam and it's a cheap camera. So um, it's, it's not as nice as like my phone camera and stuff, but um, it's fine for Bible study. I hope y'all enjoyed the study this morning. I get so uh, confused about the wording. Christy, you see my Bible? Oh, here it is right here. I have the hardest time remembering the fill in the blanks. And, um, even if I've just read them, but that's just how my brain is. Chris has one of those um, uh, photographic type memories, he and May do. And so when they read something, they retain it. And me and Amy have the type of learning that we have to apply it to remember it. So uh, we're, we're all made different, you know, and we all uh, learn differently. Uh, and that is one of the reasons I did fall in love with this book, because it has all of these places where we fill in the blanks. See where I filled this one out? You fill in the blanks, and 
And it really, really helps me um, learn uh, to have to write all this stuff down over and over. But anyway, I'm sorry that, I, that I'm that i not the best at remembering when I'm talking to y'all, but it's just the way God made my brain. He made it, all of us special and all of us different. It's a good thing he did because it would be a very boring world if we were all like robots. Um, if we were all like robots, we wouldn't even need God. We wouldn't even need a Savior. We wouldn't need anything. And so it's nice that he made us and created us in his image so that we would have a will and uh, we could learn these things. So um, I just hope that you're enjoying the Bible study. I really am having fun doing it. It is a nice and wonderful study, um, and it teaches so much. I've learned so much. Now, even if I can't remember these subdivisions, the main division, of course, the doctrine of man, I can remember. And so um, don't feel bad if you're like me and you can't remember all the little subdivisions. But uh, hopefully that we can remember the highlights. And that's, you know, what it's about, remembering the highlights. Um, and, for, I mean, if you just think back what all we've learned, we've learned about the history of the Old Testament and uh, the patriarchs and, the, um, you know, them coming out of uh, Egypt and going into Canaan and having to, uh, and then they didn't kill all the people they were supposed to kill. They wound up falling into sin. And then God's, God, it was just a big roller coaster. And they would listen to God for a while, and then they wouldn't listen to God for a while. And, um, I mean, it's just amazing what all we have reviewed. I mean, there was, there's a lot of stuff that I can remember, and I can write it down on a piece of paper, thank goodness. But, like I said, these subdivisions are a little bit more de in detail, so it's harder for me. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed Thursday. Um, I gave some exciting news on Collard Valley Cooks this morning, if you want to go in and take a look. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you ladies who come in, and gentlemen, I do have some gentlemen, that come in and watch our Bible studies. Um, if you didn't get to see the one from last night, I did review the tongue. Uh, speaking in tongues, um, it is a spiritual uh, gift, but it is a sign gift, and I and I reviewed that with Chris, thank goodness, last night, and it was so funny, because when I went to say my prayer, I didn't do very good, and I guess my mind wasn't where it should have been, it, because Chris was sitting next to me, and I was thinking about what all we had said, and I really wasn't in the right spirit to pray it anyway, but um well, let's go ahead this morning and say our prayers, and I hope that you ha do have a wonderful and blessed day. And thank you so much for watching Real Southern Woman's Bible Studies. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your word. We do thank you for the doctrine of man and creating us in your image. I am very thankful that you did give me a will and that I am able to make choices. And I pray today, as I go throughout the day, and each and every one of us listening to your word this morning in, in this study, um, and our families and our children, that we would um, use the will that you have given us to, for your glory and try and make correct decisions. Help us, uh, he, I mean, keep from temptation today. Help us withstand temptation and help us shine your light. Um, in Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, and blessed day. I love each and every one of y'all, and I will talk to y'all soon. Tomorrow, we'll be reviewing the doctrine of sin. That's the biggie. Bye, y'all. Love ya.